Okay, the last question. What kind of accent do you think I have? You have a bit of an American twang, which surprises me, but you also have a bit of English in there as well. Are you from the UK? Maybe New Zealand. Well, you definitely don't sound Chinese. Hi, Bowman. I'm Tata. Before I did a few videos about English speech, I asked my friend about the question of language. Someone wants to know if they should learn the language of the country. Someone said, "I want to learn English or American. How do I practice?" Some people are worried that their Chinese accent is too strong, and after they leave, they can't understand the outside world. For these questions, I want to say. 树尼塔无能，我一个都回答不了，因为我自己本身没有特意的去学习过某一种口音，我也说不上来我自己是什么口音。像这种疑难问题，我们还是老规矩，借助 Cambly 这个平台，让我们一起来问问英语母语者是怎么看待口音这个问题的。Cambly 是一个二十四小时都可以和母语者交流的平台，你可以在这儿找到来自不同地区、有着不同口音的外教们。那我们就英音和美音各找几个连线吧。So what is your name? I'm Tatala. Tatala. My name is Sarah. Nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> You're so cute. I have really prepared some questions about accent. Yeah, of course okay? it is. Well, the first question: What's the difference between pronunciation and accent? Pronunciation is how a word is said, I suppose, correctly. An accent is something that you pick up from different areas that you live in or where you are born. So, accent and pronunciation can sometimes go hand in hand. In England, we say tomato, and American English、mm-hmm. say tomato. So, it's a bit of both, really. Is it a big problem for native speakers to understand someone who has a really heavy accent? It can be. I find Indian accents quite difficult to understand because it's not a normal-sounding, fluent type of sentence to us. But do you think things get better when you get used to it? Yeah, because your brain's you no know, quite clever, isn't it? It can adapt quite easily to things. <laughs> so I think, given enough time, you would start to understand that person. But if it's just like a five-minute conversation, do you think the Chinese accent is difficult to understand compared to others? Um, no. No, I don't think so because they speak very slow. I think they're easier to understand. Do you think there's a need for English learners to pick up an American or British accent? No, that's amazing that somebody can speak an, a second language. I don't think you need to pick up an accent as long as you're speaking English. People can understand you. I said it's more important for you to be understood and to speak the language. Why would you want to sound like somebody else? Uh, it depends where you go. All the big cities. I think they're very open to languages. A lot of people come and go from other countries. But if you go to、mm-hmm. like a small、mm-hmm. state like Tennessee or Kentucky, that's where it may be hard to have like a Chinese accent. I have young, like say, fifteen-year-olds,、um, and they want to talk like a New Yorker, like "Yo, what's up?" And I tell them, "Don't talk like that. Don't do that. At least learn the English language first. Then you could do that down the line." If somebody really wants to learn an accent, do you have? Have any advice for that? I suppose just spend as much time around people in that environment. Also, maybe watching films because you will learn how to pronounce the words, how they are pronounced in the UK. The reading is so important because you're reading to me, so you're talking. You're talking. I'm correcting you, and I give、wow. them a podcast. It's like everything that's in the news. All articles in the news, like the coronavirus. So you put on your headphones, and it will read you the article, and you follow along.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. For you as a native speaker, which of the followings are the most important for you to understand someone? Fluency, grammar, pronunciation, accent. Pronunciation. So when you get a lot of words in a sentence which are not pronounced properly, it can make the sentence very confusing.、Mm-hmm. Maybe if it's just one or two、Makes、words,、sense. it's fine. I think there's a lot of emphasis put on grammar that isn't necessarily good. Grammar comes as you're learning to speak. Accent, I don't think matters particularly. English is an international business language. There's always going to be lots and lots of different accents, so we just have to get on with this. We、mm. have to do our best to understand these. I would actually add speaking and listening. If they're capable of understanding、mm. what I've said and they can reply to me. Accent is probably on the back of the list because you could listen real good and understand what someone's trying to say. But if they have that word all wrong, that's hard because then you're constantly asking, you know, like, what did you mean or what did you say? 欢迎回来。
看了这么多英语母语者给我们的回答之后，我相信你们和我一样，对于口音这个问题有了一个自己的认识。不管是从外教的回答来讲，还是从我自己留学的经验来讲，我觉得用英语表达和跟人交流，更重要的是你的流畅度、你的连贯性，以及像我们之前说的，通过你肢体语言和语音语调来保证你语言上的一种完整度。而至于口音这个问题，大家其实不用太纠结，随着你说话越来越流畅，你就会发现你的中文口音越来越弱了，或者说口音不再成为你交流的障碍之一了。如果大家在国外有语言环境，那么多交朋友、多去社交、多跟母语者有面对面的交流，肯定是性价比最高的练英语的方式。之后我会出一期视频来跟大家聊聊怎么在国外找到朋友。但如果你人在国内或者羞涩于社交的话，那么完全可以借用 Cambly 这个平台，像我一样坐在家里面跟母语外教一对一的交流。如果大家现在注册的话，还可以用我的推荐码塔塔拉二零二零，这样就可以获得十五分钟的免费课时。既然最近大家都没有出门，宅在家里上网课，那不如把英语口语也列入自己的学习计划之中吧。那今天的视频就到这儿吧，我是塔塔拉，我爱你们。彩蛋时间。I just have a question. How do you define the queen's accent? Her accent is kind of standard. The royal family tend to speak more old-fashioned English because so many different people from different countries. People move around in their own country. Different accents rub off, and so everybody's accents have changed over the years. And oh also, oh my god, so interesting! And so、um, we're also quite lazy, so we use slang words for a lot of things. So obviously, this isn't the queen's English because you. You are not speaking the full words correctly.